Welcome to the Electrical Engineering Education YouTube channel. In this series, we'll delve into the exciting world of engineering design using modeling and simulation as our guiding principles. Our journey will be focused on creating a high-flying quadcopter from scratch. From initial components to the ultimate hardware implementation, we'll explore the step-by-step -step process to ensure our quadcopter soars to new heights. In this video, we will discuss about requirements, components level modeling, model fidelity, system level integration and testing, and finally about control and hardware implementation and testing. So far, we've divided the quadcopter into subsystems and components. We'll design the components, subsystems, and system to meet requirements and then demonstrate that the quadcopter will fly. How should we start our design process? We could begin by purchasing off-the-shelf parts, building a hardware prototype, and testing to see if it works. This might work for simple systems, but doesn't scale well for complex systems. It could become expensive and time-consuming to iterate through different hardware prototypes until we're happy with our design. Instead, we'll learn how to use modeling and simulation as the foundation of the design process. First, let's explain what we mean by these terms in the context of this program. Modeling Our lives revolve around dynamic systems that change over time, buildings fluctuate in temperature throughout the day, vehicles change position toward their destination, and computers change voltages to process information. Modeling is the process of creating representations, or models, of such systems so that we can predict their behavior. Models typically use mathematics to describe the system, often involving algebraic, differential, and difference equations. The box below contains six common equations that model real-world systems. Equation 1 is the model of harmonic oscillator, equation 2 is model of a DC motor, equation 3 is logistic population growth, equation 4 is 1D thermal conduction, equation 5 is model of pendulum motion, and 6 is radioactive decay. Model fidelity. We can decide how much detail or fidelity is included in a model. Low fidelity models are simplistic and easier to develop, but may only roughly predict a system's behavior. High fidelity models account for more detail and can predict a system's behavior more accurately. However, high fidelity models introduce additional complexity, are more challenging to develop, and generally are slower to solve. As a professional tip, when modeling a complex system, start with a low fidelity model and then incrementally add fidelity as needed. At each step of the way, simulate the model and inspect the results. This approach has many benefits including, 1. We observe how adding fidelity affects the system's behavior. 2. We can quickly identify and troubleshoot issues when they occur, and, 3. We build confidence in our design through a better understanding of the system. Simulation Simulation is the process of solving the model to produce observations of the system's response. In this program, we'll use numerical methods to solve the model at successive points in time, known as time steps, until a stop time is reached. We can observe the simulation results at each time step to understand exactly how the model behaves. Modeling and Simulation for Engineering Design Consider a few systems we might encounter daily, like refrigerators, cars, elevators, and coffee makers. These often include a physical system, also known as a plant, and embedded software that makes it function, example, controllers, state machines. We can use modeling and simulation to design both physical and software systems. In this engineering design process, we create models for the components and subsystems and simulate them to verify that they meet requirements. We then integrate these into a complete system level model. In our future videos, we'll design the physical system for our quadcopter, following the steps highlighted in blue in the diagram. Component and subsystem design and testing. We'll begin by developing models for the airframe and motor and propeller components. We'll take an incremental modeling approach, starting with low-fidelity models containing basic functionality. We'll incrementally add fidelity to account for additional physics and detail. 
We'll simulate the model at each step to ensure the results make sense. In our next videos, we'll simulate the completed designs to check if they meet requirements. If we find issues, we'll investigate and then refine the models or requirements. By continuously testing throughout the design process, we uncover issues as early as possible when they are easier and quicker to fix. As a pro tip, simulate your models with what-if scenarios. This is a great way to explore design options and better understand your system. What if my quadcopter has twice as many batteries? What if my quadcopter is located on Mars? What if my design is a hexacopter instead of a quadcopter? System level integration and testing. Once our components and subsystems are designed and tested, we'll integrate them into a system level model. The system level model will serve as a virtual prototype of our quadcopter, enabling us to explore its capabilities and reveal limitations. We'll perform interactive and scenario based tests to ensure it flies, and then use the model to evaluate our design options. Control design and testing. With our physical design finished, we could then develop a control system to fly the quadcopter. We could design closed-loop controllers to maneuver the quadcopter to specific positions. Then, we could implement supervisory controllers to make the quadcopter perform specific missions and automatically land when the battery is low. Throughout this control design process, we would use simulation to test and verify that the controllers function correctly. Hardware deployment and testing. Once the physical system and control systems are designed, what do we do with our model? We could use automatic code generation to generate production code directly from our model. The flight control algorithms could be deployed directly to embedded hardware on the quadcopter for further testing. This helps eliminate hand coding errors and reduces turnaround time for hardware tests, enabling engineers to focus on the design tasks in the model. Summary As we saw in the video, modeling and simulation remain central to our engineering design process. This approach is known as model-based design and is used in many real-world engineering projects. Model-based design helps engineers focus on engineering tasks while collaboratively supporting complex design problems. This empowers teams to incrementally add fidelity and complexity to designs, create virtual prototypes and explore what-if scenarios with simulation, build confidence and identify issues early with continuous testing and verification, split work across different regions, teams, and engineers. Share and reuse designs and intellectual property. Automatically generate production code for embedded systems. Integrate workflows into existing development processes like Agile or DevOps. Ultimately, the final model serves as a design artifact containing the entire comprehensive engineering effort.